Hello, I want to welcome you to the official YouTube channel of Antioch United Methodist Church in Springfield, Missouri. I'm Pastor Kevin, good to have you here. This is Thursday, January 12th. Tomorrow is Friday the 13th. And this is my message for Sunday, January 15th. If you want to see this video and this message uh, shared live, please join us on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Antioch United Methodist Church, all one word, lowercase, no space. If you're ever anywhere near Springfield, Missouri, please join us on Sunday morning at 8.30 and 11 o'clock, which has children's church, praise team, musicians, piano and choir. I promise you, you will be warmly welcomed and you will be inspired by the message and the music. I want to continue my theme from my message from the last video, Less Stressed and More Blessed in 2023. This message is titled, Blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. Sometimes you just have to accept what you cannot change. Many of us have heard the serenity prayer, I like the version that a friend of mine posted on our Facebook this past week. Give me the serenity to accept the people I cannot change, the courage to change direction when I see them coming, and the wisdom to not smack some sense into them when I cannot avoid them. There are some people that we would just love to smack across the face, because you can't believe the dumb decisions that they make. That's how it is sometimes. Are you stressed about somebody or something that is out of your hands? If you know somebody that you would love to smack, if you know someone who's making bad decision after bad decision, you know what? You can't change them. You can't control them. So this message is for you. When you face a problem that makes you stressed, first ask yourself, what can I do about it? What can I do to solve it? If there is something that you can do to solve a problem, by all means, of course, take practical steps to take care of it. God is not going to remove 30 pounds from you. You gotta do it yourself. God's not gonna say, presto, you're out of debt. You have to pay down your, your credit cards on your own. However, if there is nothing you can do to solve a certain problem in your life, then you just have to give it to God. Surrender it. In the Old Testament, was also called the, the Hebrew Scriptures, when the kingdom of Judah was facing the threat of three armies coming at them at the same time. In 2 Chronicles 20, verse 6, King Jehoshaphat began his prayer by praising God. He said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can withstand you. He began his prayer with praise. And then he laid out this, in this overwhelming problem, three armies, three nations, coming at them at the same time. And King Jehoshaphat concluded his prayer in verse 12 by saying, for we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That's an excellent prayer. Not as well known as Psalm 23 or the Lord's Prayer, but it's an honest prayer, an excellent prayer. He's saying, Lord, we do not know what to do. I don't know what to do. I have no clue. But God, I give it to you. You may face tough situations that stress you out, and they're, they're beyond your ability to do anything about them. If that's the case, you may have to pray, Lord, I don't know what to do. I give it to you. Say it with me. Lord, I don't know what to do, but I give it to you. Are you praying to God for, to, to, are you praying for God to help a friend, your son, your daughter, 
a grandchild? Are you praying and asking God to help your spouse, a coworker, a neighbor, your aunt? I believe strongly in praying for others. We practice prayer all the time in our church. We have seen literal miracles right before our eyes in this sanctuary that I'm standing in right here. However, the person you're praying for and you care about needs to want to change on their own. The person you're praying for needs to believe for herself or himself. That person you're praying for who you care about, that person has to ask and seek and knock. The person you're praying for needs to make their own decisions, to make their own lives better, and it has to be on their time. You might recall the parable of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. It's not, of course, a literal story. It's a parable, a story but it speaks of of deep, important truth. In Luke 15, verses 13 through 20, it says the younger son, who was the prodigal son, got together all he had. He set off for a distant country and there squandered his wealth in wild living, sex, drugs, rock and roll. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. Now, that's a good thing. That's the point right there where mom and dad or grandma and grandpa want to intervene, step in, and bail them out. Oh, honey, you're in need. You're having a hard time. You're broke. You you don't have money for the the utility bill again will let me help you out. That may be helpful or it may not be helpful. That's the thing. When the prodigal son began to be in need, what did he do? It says in verse 15, so he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country. Notice when he began to be in need, that's when he began to work. Get off his butt and begin to work. That was a good thing. Who sent him to fee, f- into the fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating. Ugh, gross. But no one gave him anything. And guess what? That was a good thing. No one gave him anything. I believe in being a good Samaritan. I believe in loving your neighbor. But sometimes a person needs to be given nothing so they can do what? Hit rock bottom. When no one gave him anything, those are the last words of verse 16. Look at the next verse. When he came to his senses, he came to his senses when he began to be in need after he had squandered all his money, when mom and dad did not bail him out, And no one gave him a thing. That's when he came to his senses. That's what he needed. More than food, more than money, this boy needed to learn a valuable lesson. He needed to come to his senses on his own. And he gives a speech how he'll go back to his father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. And he says in verse 19, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Verses uh, 18 and 19 tell us his very well-rehearsed mea culpa speech. But verse 20 says, so he got up and went to his father. And that would not have happened if he had not hit, hit rock bottom. And that would not have happened if anybody had given him anything. It all worked out. He had come to that place right there on his own. I believe no amount of prayer was going to suddenly wake him up. Even though this is a parable, this is a person in real life, he had to experience the consequences of his actions in order to, as it says, come to his senses. So, are you praying for somebody who's making bad choices? 
Are you praying for somebody who's making bad decision after bad decision and you are so tired of seeing this person spiral in the wrong direction? Do you care about somebody who's not living right, not living for God, not obeying him? Pray for them, but let them experience the consequences of their actions. Don't worry. Give them to God and just trust that that person you're praying for, they'll get there. They will come to their senses in their time. Sometimes we stress because things don't work out the way we want them to. I've been there, you've been there, we've all been there. The first disciples have been there. Take a look at Matthew 16, verses 21 through 23. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Happy ending, right? That's Easter. But Peter took him aside and began to rebuke them. Imagine that, rebuking the Messiah, rebuking the Son of God. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Denial. No, no, Lord, that can't happen. They weren't listening. And perhaps these disciples, like Peter, would not have freaked out so much later on when Jesus was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane if they had just trusted that what he said was true, if they had just trusted that in three short days, it would all be fine. But no, in Matthew 26, verse 56, when Christ was arrested, they panicked. They stressed out and they panicked. It says, then all the disciples deserted him and fled. They ran scared because they wouldn't take what he said to heart. Maybe if they would have remembered what he said, that the Christ would be betrayed, arrested, crucified, yes, but then resurrected, perhaps they wouldn't have panicked. And they would have seen on Easter Sunday that it all worked out. Things are going to work out for you. Just trust God and hang on. I know it's hard. It was hard for the first Christians to watch their rabbi get arrested, get flogged, get crucified. I'm not saying it would be easy. I'm saying it would be less stressed. They would have been less stressed if they would have just taken what Jesus said to heart beforehand and trusted that by Sunday, what he said would happen would actually happen. Oftentimes, things just have a way of working out. But for a while, sometimes it looks like things in your life are not working out. And we freak out. We panic. We go into a meltdown. We don't have to. You do not have to have a panic attack every time it looks like things are not working out for you. Blessed are the flexible for they will not be bent out of shape. Sometimes we need to just say, okay, things are not going as planned. Things are not working out the way I had hoped, but it'll work out. God's got this. It'll be fine. This past week, my youngest daughter, who is a junior in high school, had to prepare to do a semester of tutoring just in, in some school in the area. We had hoped that she would have been able to do tutoring in our local elementary school, where she had gone to school when she was young, because then she could leave her high school during the day and go do, do her tutoring at the high school up the street. I mean, up the street from our house. Then she would have a very short drive from there back to our house. Sounds good, right? That was our idea, our vision. 
And then we found out this past week that that was not going to be able to happen. Well, I got more upset than my daughter did. My daughter seems to be able to remain calm better than I do. No wonder Jesus said to become like a child in our faith. When the idea didn't work out, my daughter simply went to the person in charge of tutoring at her high school and sat down and had a conversation. Long story short, it got worked out. It all got worked out to where my daughter could do her tutoring right there at her high school, where she is every day, every weekday. And that works out just fine. Was it our idea? No, but it worked out just fine. But sometimes I panic before I see things work out. And if you get anxious or upset when you see things not going as planned, stop, pray, and say, God, I don't know how this is going to work out, but all things work together for good, Romans 8.28, and everything will be just fine. That's how we need to pray when things go wrong, when things don't go our way. Have there been times in your life in which you had hoped things would go a certain way and things didn't go that way? Things didn't go the way you had hoped and expected, but then eventually things in your life worked out just fine. Has it ever happened to you? I'll bet so. If so, take time to reflect. Think back upon those times. The more you reflect back upon those times in your life, the more you can relax and be less stressed and more blessed about whatever it is, about whatever is not going as planned now in your life. The more you reflect upon those times that things were not working out and then it all worked out just fine, the more you think back upon those times, the more you can relax about whatever doesn't go according to your plans for 2023. 2023 may go exactly the way you want to go for your life. Or some plans that you have for this year may not go smooth, may not work out. Who knows? In my last video, last Sunday, I mentioned the Damar Hamlin tragedy. The football player who dropped down in a cardiac arrest on the football field which is working out well because he's making a remarkable recovery as of this video. Obviously, when it happened, you know what? It was awful. It was scariest for his family first and then for his fans. And it was scary for anybody who knew him personally and also those who were watching. But you know, God right now is getting immense glory from that situation. God is getting the glory during this whole DeMar Hamlin hospitalization. The amount of people praying for him, the image of all those big tough football players kneeling together, praying, wow. And has there ever been a time when somebody on ESPN began to pray on air? I don't think so. And there have been over, what, $6 million raised for DeMar Hamlin's children's toy drive, charity? Wow. And more importantly, people are coming to Christ. They're being turned on to Jesus because of what they're witnessing. See, again, Romans 8.28 tells us, that all things work together for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. That verse is not saying all of the things that happen to you are good, because they're not. 
Cardiac arrest is not good. The awful, painful things in your life are not good. A stroke, diabetes, your boyfriend or girlfriend dumping you, being unemployed, they're not good things. But that verse is saying that all things work together. All the things in your life will come together for your ultimate good because of your relationship with God. So believe that and declare that in Jesus' name. Begin to say things like, I don't need to know how things will work out. I just know that all things will work out for my good. And say things like, everything is working out for God's glory. Everything is working out better than expected. Keep on talking that way. That's how I talk to myself when I'm alone. And it's been a reality. I have a wife who is much better looking than I am. I have two awesome kids. Our family literally paid off 20 years of credit card debt finally in the year 2020. In the middle of a health pandemic, we paid off our credit card debt. We became debt free during the time of the worst of it, of the pandemic. Because in my prayer life, I say things like, God, I don't need to know how things will work out. I just know that by you, God, all things will work out for my good. Everything is working out for your glory. Everything is working out better than I expected. When you talk that way, you begin to feel a sense of calm, tranquility coming upon you, the peace that passes understanding. If you will talk like that and pray like that, I guarantee you, you will be less stressed and more blessed in 2023. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please give a like to this video. Subscribe to our channel. I'll be here every Thursday or Friday to give you the pre-recorded version of my next Sunday's message. Thanks again for watching. God bless.